but I think the time is running out. So let me only indicate now where are the limits, the shortcomings of this established tradition of inclusive humanism. Now I come to the end of the limits and the future perspectives. Let me first say very clearly what is not a limit. That is the modernity of this humanism. The modernity of this humanism means it claims for universal validity and it is strictly against any form of cultural relativism. It stands and falls with truth claims of this conceptualization of human dignity. And this is a clear position against any form of relativistic postmodernism. And it is not by chance that postmodernism goes along with the dissolving humanism, with negating humanism, which I think we can't any longer accept this way of putting that great tradition of modern Western humanism under our feet and smash it down and say it is uh, over. No. The question is, where are the limits and how can we overcome them? Now on the screen you can see what I think what the main limits of the tradition of modern Western humanism are so that we have to criticize this tradition in respect to these limits. It is a suppressing, a suppression of human inhumanity. It is an illusionary relationship to classical antiquity. Sorry for my colleagues in classical antiquity loving Plato and Aristoteles and the old Greeks, the Greeks were no humanists. Forget it. Remaining ethnocentric elements, limitations of the concept of reason, and a highly problematic relationship to nature. I can't go through all these limits. Let me concentrate only on two. The remaining ethnocentric elements and the suppression of human inhumanity. Now, what about the ethnocentrism? We have to rethink the logic of historical thinking because historical thinking is a field where identity formation mainly takes place. And we have a very strong tradition which is close to ethnocentrism that is a origin-oriented teleology. From the very beginning onwards through 5,000 years our culture has mainly remained the same and we are still able to go into the future and things like that. You, we all know what that is. That is no longer plausible. And of course, the professional historians, they don't follow this logic deliberately. They work in a different way, but they can't tell you what new logic they really have. And my proposal is, let's look intensively to that new logic, which opens up an enormous space for new intercultural communication in history, Now you see uh, at the screen the problems we have to solve. This is what we have to bring about. We scholars in the humanities and in the social sciences and uh, concerning the highly problematic relationship to nature, the necessity of mediating culture and nature, we need a, com we need a complete new cooperation between natural scientists and uh, humanists, philosophers, and social scientists. Without a deep level of reflection, what we humans are as a living synthesis 
of nature and culture. We can speak on climate catastrophe as long as we want, we will never understand what the issue is about. As long as we don't know what it means, at the same time to be a natural being and a cultural one. We never have a real conceptual approach to the problems we have with the, na with the nature as an empire which strikes back. You understand what I mean? And that is a big thing. We need philosophy for that. Because natural science is based on the presupposition that nature has no sense. The humanities are based on the um, presupposition that history has a sense. Now, how to bring that together? It is an open question, and we should work on it. This is not my issue. I would like simply to list up what I mean what we have to do. Changing the logic of historical thinking, I said it already. Concerning this idealistic view of the humanity, realized humanity in classical antiquity, forget it. It is an illusion. But that doesn't mean that historical thinking can uh, miss or, 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 or should throw out elements of meta or contrafactual quality. What we need is not fiction, but utopian elements of, of, of meaning and significance. We should take the dreams of the people of the past as seriously for cultural history as what they did to other people on the level of culture. My last point is simply this one, integrating in humanity. What does it mean? Now, the last point I would like to tackle is the issue of integrating in humanity. To say it very clearly, a future directed humanism is only possible if it is able to face the Holocaust as the most radical form of inhumanity which at least I can think about as a German and I think even many, many others follow me with that. Can we speak of a humanism vis-a-vis -vis the historical experience of the crime against humanity in the 20th century and before? The answer to that question is only under two conditions. Condition number one, that in all processes of, of forming historical identity, the historians have to integrate the shadow of one's own history into the self-image of the people. Normally we try to exterritorialize or to export the negative things which happened in our history into the image of the otherness of the others. That is no longer impossible. We have to realize the negative and dark side of our own history. And don't think that you don't have a dark side in your history. You can look at others and you can see a lot of dark sides. Of course, I know what I'm speaking <laughs> as a German, but you have your dark side as well. This is condition number one. Integrating the dark side or the negative, even the traumatic events in historical experience into the image of oneself. That brings you into a completely different situation of intercultural communication, if the others do the same. The second condition is, we have to introduce into the interpretative work of the humanities and the social sciences a new basic category of understanding. And that is the category of human suffering which has not yet real, uh, sufficiently realized in our work. Go into the library, look into the dictionaries and encyclopedias of the uh, humanities and social sciences, whether you find an entry, suffering. Leiden in German. 
You won't. Maybe in the theological encyclopedia you will have it. But in the others, no entry. In the German-speaking uh, dictionaries you have it. Leiden is a Dutch city, but not a basic form of human life. And if you are able to rethink or better to reinterpret historical experience wherever it took place and wherever it is with a systematical recognition of this category. Besides the others, of course, besides the others, there's not a word against the category of human action. Action theory, you have libraries full. Do you have a suffering theory? And humans suffer as much as they do something. They were done very often more than they are doing. And that is what we have to realize. A great work for the historians. And with the recognition of, these, of this dimension of human life, humanism will get a new feature. It will become really human. Now this is what I said uh, at the end. If we re-change, if we change the way of understanding human life according to the ideas of a future-directed humanism, we will end in an idea what it means to be real human. And that is the end of my paper, and I show you something which does not need any further explication. Well, I need time for a second lecture because you ask me, in fact, about the importance of what we call historical culture. Historical culture means the manifestation of history in practical human life. You spoke about public life, so that is um, monuments, museums, teaching and learning in school. And if we really look around in our normal life, you, we will find out, I did it even in my introductory course in the university, people had to write a paper, a protocol, a review, uh, about one week they should write down whenever they met something historical. The result was astonishing. A lot of encounters with historical things uh, uh, took place. Street names, old buildings, some remarks of elderly people, and so on and so on. on other, and of course, uh, the television with some historical uh, novellas and so on and so on. Well, there, history has a place in human life and it has a place in political life. In Germany, in the post-war West German historical culture, that means where history plays a role for the official presentation of the Federal Republic, the self-understanding of the people, we always had struggle about the past. And now look around and you can see there are different possibilities of letting history play, or making history play a public role. Traditional monuments normally are triumphant. Ha! We gave it to the others. We were the victors. Uh, yes, the victors. Even the Russians made a monument in Sevastopol, where in fact they lost the Crimean War, and you walk through all these monuments, and I became very irritated when I was there, Please tell me who was the victor and who was defeated because they presented the battle around Sevastopol as if the Russians were the victors. This is this triumphant thing. We are great and we defeated the others. This should be over. There is a new trend in historical culture. I can give you two very extreme examples, or let's say three. 
One is all the Holocaust museums around the world, not only in the United States, follow a, a similar scheme. That the people were guided through the horror of mass murder, and at the end, in every of these Holocaust museums is a message. Be tolerant. They made it with a wonderful quotation of Archbishop Tutu. That is one example. Second example, the Vietnam Memorial in Washington. Normally, monuments let you rise your head and you look into the sky, great people. The Vietnam Memorial, you have to go down. And you have a, a, a wall where you can mirror, reflect yourself. You can see your own face. And there all the names of the killed American soldiers were inscribed. This is great. I mean, that has a limit. What about the other dead people? But that is not the issue. And the, Sorry, the third example is a Holocaust monument in Berlin. The Germans were able to build a monument close to their parliament in Berlin, which commemorates the murder of six million Jews. This has an impact in the minds of the visitors. Something will remain, and you have a lot of other examples, not so remarkable and like the Holocaust uh, in, 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 the, in the museums or in the, or the Vietnam Memorial, go into the new museum, sorry to mention it here in Curitiba, in, in Rio, because we were there, how they treated to change the attitude of the Brazilians concerning the Indians. It's remarkable how they did it. You can criticize a lot, but it belongs to the inscription of dignity into the others to give them a voice. And that has to be brought about in historical culture, in monuments, in public discussions, in the mass media, and of course in school as well. Thank you very much. comemorou no Brasil, no dia 19, ou seja, três dias atrás, o seu 72 o aniversário, e fica muito sensibilizado pelo carinho que lhe dedicar. La 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 la